Hello everyone, my name is Ivan and I'm building radio control airplane and my own turbojet engine to break the world speed record for the fastest radio control airplane. In this video, I will tell you about a wind tunnel test of my airplane at Ember Riddle University at Prescott, Arizona. This is the first time that my airplane ever been tested in a wind tunnel. And I decided to split that video into two parts. In first part, I will tell you about how I designed, built, and then tested the plane. And in the second part, I will tell you about results and how they're gonna change the design. In order to test it, I needed to build the model of the plane. Initially, I wanted to test one-to-one -one scale model, but it wouldn't fit in a tunnel. And so 65% scale was the biggest plane I could test in that wind tunnel. And at first it seems pretty easy, just uh, scale down the plane and print it and then just test it. But it turned out it's a little bit more complicated than that. Uh, the plane is printed from nylon and uh, I had about 10 or maybe even more calls with Dr. Dorfling before he approved the design of the model. The model has steel tubes as a spars that connect a wing to the fuselage and also it has a steel spar that connected to the mount so it kind of becomes like a steel skeleton and the nylon parts slide into that skeleton and that makes model pretty strong so that way we know that model is strong and uh, it will not break inside the wind tunnel and then break a wind tunnel but before telling you more about the design i wanted to mention people without who the test would not be possible dr dorfling uh, is a professor at Embry Riddle University, and I was very lucky to meet him at Oshka Shaira show in the summer of 2023. And later, he invited me to test my plane at the University Wind Tunnel. So I'm very, very grateful to him. Also, I wanted to say a big, big thank you to Bud Lane. He's the owner of a company called Spantec, located in Kentucky, and he sponsored printing that airplane. And Bud told me later that just raw material to print that plane costed $5,400 which I would never be able to afford, so that test would not be possible without him. And I'm also very, very happy that he ended up going to Arizona from Kentucky to see the wind tunnel test of that airplane. And there is one more person who made that wind tunnel test possible. His name is Kyle. He's a senior at Embry-Riddle University right now, and uh, I also met him at Oshka Shaira show in the summer of 2023. And I was staying at his apartment and he was helping me to test that airplanes. All right, so let's get back to the model. So when I arrived to Arizona, the first day I had to assemble the model. And uh, it was pretty easy, but it was time consuming. And after it was assembled, Dr. Orfling suggested filling all of the small gaps between uh, connected parts with clay. So we did this. It, it looks kind of messy on the model, but it's actually very, very thin layer and it only fills in the actual gap. But before putting that airplane to wind tunnel, we needed to do one more thing. We mounted the plane between two tables and we loaded the wing. Uh, we mounted it inverted and we loaded the wing with the sandbags of oh, a little bit over the load that that airplane would experience to see how much it would deformate and if it will break or not. And it's actually performed very, very well. I don't remember exact uh, number, but it, the wing, the wing tip of a plane deformed less than five millimeters, which is really good. And after airplane successfully passed the test, we could start testing in the wind tunnel. I had 14 control surfaces for the plane that could be exchanged in order to change the angle of, uh, angle of elevons. And uh, it was zero, five, 10 and 15 degrees, plus and minus for each side. So during second day, we were we were just so during second day we were just replacing those control surfaces and measuring airplane at every angle of attack and every side slip plus every angle of attack and plus every configuration of a control surface. So it was very 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 time consuming. On the last day, we taped many nylon strings to the plane and then turned off the light in a room in a building. And that allowed us to see the flow, uh, flow visualization. So we could see how Airflow flies around the wing and around the plane and see if there is anything strange going around or not. And it was just in general, it was fun. All right, guys, in the second part, I will tell you about the results that I got from the test. So don't forget to subscribe. 
and follow me on Instagram or Facebook where I post much more recent progress. See you in the next video.